Hello, I'm Lisa. I'm going to show you how to make my cupcake luggage tag. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to do is to download the free cupcake pattern from my blog, lisapay.com. Now, when you print your pattern sheets out, I really recommend that you print them straight out onto a lightweight cardboard, run that through your printer, and then you can cut your template pieces straight out and you can use them immediately. Even a heavier weight paper uh, will do the trick just fine. Okay, now you'll find that each pattern piece is clearly marked with all of your uh, interfacing and fusible webbing requirements. So they are ironed on, they're fusible, and it makes everything a whole lot easier. Now, I use a felt tip laundry marker, something like this with a fine tip to trace around my pattern pieces straight onto the back of the fabric. Okay. Cutting out small curved pattern pieces is done best using the axis of your scissors, which means right up here in the axis. And the reason for that is ultimately you have more control over the scissors and you can make a longer cut and, and then you have a smoother edge when you're done. Just letting you know with laying out your pattern pieces, when a pattern piece says cut to one reversed, all it means is that we lay our pattern piece on our fabric, we cut one out like that, then we flip our pattern piece back on the fabric and cut out a second one. That's what that means. Now, by now you should have all of your pattern pieces cut out and ready to go. The next step is to attach your rickrack trim. Uh, cut your rickrack piece to extend just about a centimetre beyond either side of the cupcake. I have my points marked in. If you have a look on your template, you'll see exactly where that goes. It's around about two and a half centimetres from the base. Okay, I like to glue my rickrack in place first. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to just machine stitch it into place. So this is really just about holding its position. So just a really fine line of craft glue and that's really just, it's, it's a bit like tacking it into place. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that across now. When you position it on, try and follow the curve of the base of the cupcake so that it has a more of a realistic look to it. it makes the whole thing look a little bit more 3D and uh, that's also why I've chosen Rick Rack. It's a great braid, it's sweet and pretty but it's also quite flexible so you can do that with it. Okay, so I've just lightly pressed that down into place. It's a little bit of curve along the bottom. It's just following that curve like that. I'll just wait a moment and then I will machine stitch that one into place. You can hand stitch it if you like, but it's just quite neat on the machine and quick. The next step that we've got that nicely machined into place now, I'm just going to leave those ends extended there. That's fine for now. Okay, next step is to attach our cupcake top and our cupcake icing by fusing them on. Now this is your backing paper from your fusible web. So we peel that off and we're going to just position that one on. Just make sure that it's lined up well with the top of the cake and just with a hot iron and a protective cloth you'll just press that one on and then when that one is on same thing remove your backing paper and position your icing lining up your corners your edges and you see that we had to do that second to layer it over the top of our little rick rack braid. So then we'll iron that one on also. Now that our cupcake middle and icing pieces are fused to the cupcake front, we're going to work a blanket applique stitch around the lower edge of the icing. And we're going to work a blanket applique stitch around the lower edge of the cake. Not around the outside because that's done when we when we complete the cupcake but as much work as we can do now before the cupcake is assembled uh, it's done because all of our knots can be hidden behind okay so I've, I'm just using a, 
a medium sized needle. I've got a double strand of embroidery thread and we're just going to work a small neat blanket applique stitch. Now I'm going to show you how to do it here. We actually come out right on the edge of our, of our line there and we're going to make our stitches quite small just a couple of mil for a nice neat outlining finish. Keep your stitches nice and even. So we're going in and under and coming out right on the edge again and coming out through the loop that creates our little edging stitch. Now if you're not familiar with this stitch I do have a video which really gets up close and personal with this stitch. And you can see that already there's a nice little outline happening. And we're going to go all the way around the base and finish here. And then I'm going to use a contrasting brown to do the same with that one. All right. There is our blanket applique stitch all done on those two lower edges. Now we'll need, you'll need about around about 16 buttons for your, your little decorations on top. Now we're going to place those randomly over your cupcake icing. Best not to line them up and make them look too perfect because then it'll look just too perfect. It needs to look like a bit of a scattering. So just have a little play with it until you've got something happening that you're happy with. Now make sure that wherever you sew your buttons, none of them are too close to that edge because obviously we're going to construct the cupcake and we're going to be having to sew around here. So just keep a, a fair distance remembering your stitching like that. And once you're happy with your design, it's just a matter of sewing your buttons on and of course our buttons are all sewn on now and we're ready to assemble the cupcake. So we turn the front over and the first thing we're going to do is just glue down those little rick rack edges. So just fold those in. and you need to cut yourself a length of grow grain ribbon for our tag which sits up here about eight centimeters a piece like that I'm going to get you to fold it over and just secure the bottom so that we've got a nice even loop just again with a bit of glue and then we want to position that little loop right at the top. Got the cupcake on the front. So just pop it on there. I want to let you need to leave about a centimetre extended. Turn it over quickly and just check that you've really got it centered there. We'll just let that sit there and dry. In the meantime, we've got our cupcake back, the wrong side of our cupcake back, and we've got our little cupcake filling. The piece, it can be a piece of felt or wadding, whatever you've chosen to use. And we really just need to just make sure that doesn't move. We're just going to pop that right on the back there in the center. Okay, so that's just going to be encased. It just gives the the little luggage tag, that nice little bit of fill. Okay, last of all, we're going to run a line. Now not too much because we're sewing it so we don't want to be battling through all of that glue but it's, it's good to get it just lightly sealed before we're sewing it. So just a fine line all around. Okay, I'm going to flip the cupcake over and it's just a matter of pressing that on top. 
lining everything up. And of course that way our little tag is caught in between the two layers. Press it down the edges all the way. You might like to just hold your pieces together and, and ladder stitch your outside, but I just find it's a whole lot easier to have it already just a little bit secure. It stops it being so fiddly. But do watch the amount of glue that you use because it does bulk up that area where you're going to be getting your needle through. The final stage here, now that we're all ready to go, edges are all sealed and we've had a little bit of time to dry. We're going to blanket stitch the entire edge of the cupcake. Now I'm going to be using two different colours. So I'm just going to show you a little trick with this. Because we've got a beautifully clear back, we don't have any knots showing or anything like that. It's nice to keep it as clear as we can. So I'm going to show you how to hide and sink a knot in felt. I'm going to come in from the back here, a little way from the edge. And we want to come out right where our purple, because I'm using purple to stitch the top part. I'm going to come out. So you can see there that I've come in a fair way from the edge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that little knot out. And because it's felt and because we've got some wadding underneath, I'm just going to pop my little awl or anything you've got, like a skewer stick or something like that, just to enlarge that hole a little bit. And then I'm going to tug on that knot. And you can see that we can virtually make it disappear into the felt there and just cover that up and you can see that that's quite invisible and it's lovely to give a tidy finish like that and we also finish off in the same way okay so when you get to the end and you and you finish off you can hide your knot as you go now we're just going to blanket stitch that edge there's a few layers to get through so i'm using quite a you can see my needle is probably a bit extreme but i am a a doll maker, bear maker, so I do have some very large long needles, but there's a few layers to get through, so you need a fairly strong needle. So we're going to do your classic blanket stitch around the edge now, and we're going to keep those stitches probably around about four mil deep and four mil apart. I always tend to tuck my thread around that uh, my index finger there, and it. It stops me getting all caught up each time. I hold it with that one. So if you're not familiar with a blanket stitch, I also do a video that shows you up close, step by step, how to master that stitch. So you might want to have a look and take your time and get to know that stitch before you do this part. And we'll go all the way all the way around that top layer. I'll change my thread colour, I'll do the little tan pieces and then I'll probably do a pink around the base. There we are. I've slipped a split ring through our little grow grain loop and it's all done. You could thread a ribbon through that loop instead if you wish, though I think I find that the split ring gives it a really nice professional finish. So now that you've made this one, You'll find that uh, all of my luggage tags are constructed in the same way and uh, they're terribly addictive and they're fun and as, as you found out they're really quick to make and I'll be designing many many more of these for you all to make. Now these are just a few of my upcoming patterns so they'll be coming up soon available just go to my blog and they've got their multi-use. I mean, I've called them luggage tags, but realistically, they make great bag charms. Just great home decor. Fantastic gifts. And in saying that, um, another use for them, of course, is uh, for all of you scrapbookers. They do make up most of the makeup really beautifully in your scrapbooking papers, and they make really nice gift tags. That's the cupcake made up in scrapbooking papers. All to and from on the back. Beautiful. So we'll look forward to uh, seeing you with the next one. Bye.